So I've gotten a lot of questions about overwintering both earth pupators and non-earth pupators. So I'm going to show you how I do that. This is my um, small refrigerator that I keep in my enclosed garage. And I'll show you my pupae inside. Now I use this refrigerator because I keep it much warmer than I would keep my regular food refrigerator. I try to keep the temperature around 40 degrees or so. Sometimes it will slip into the uh, high 30s, maybe 38. I do not really want it to go to freezing. It's not necessary. I also keep an open tray of water at all times because humidity is incredibly important, which is why I have hygrometers and thermometers in here. And I check daily to make sure there is high humidity and it's not too cold. Now you can use any sealable, closable Tupperware. This happened to be what I had. Um, anything that will keep moisture in. You don't have to worry about air. When they are under diapause, they need very little oxygen, although you should open it at least once a month to freshen the air. Okay, so in this one are my earth pupators, which means that these are larvae that will crawl underground and pupate for the winter in their natural state. So I always wanna see some moisture see there's some moisture on the sides there and I use bubble wrap to enclose them also to keep the moisture in because a loss of moisture is the main reason they don't make it. Now also because they would be surrounded in dirt in little cells I wrap them in tissue paper. You can use thin tissue or paper towel but just to protect the pupae. I'll show you one of them. I have it just rolled up in here very gently. This is one of my regal moth pupae, royal walnut moth. It's from my hickory horn devils. So I don't actually close both ends. Plenty of air can get through this tissue paper, but this will help it to retain moisture and protect it in case the refrigerator gets too cold. Again, freezing is not really necessary. I have them all placed gently in here. I had misted it before I closed it for the winter. Just gently cover it with the bubble wrap and seal them up. Okay, now here are my cocooning species. I have atlas moths in here and giant peacock moths. So these guys would just be on the sides of trees like this. Again, they still need a lot of moisture, but they don't need the protection of being rolled up in paper because they have their own cocoon, as you can see. So they're all in there. I still use some bubble wrap to hold in moisture and keep them a little bit of condensation. I did mist them before I shut them in and I do relatively, you know, I check to make sure they're not bone dry. You never want them to be bone dry. Um, you also don't want mold, so you should check at least once a month, like I said, to make sure there's no mold growing. And that's really it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. It's in my bio.